Now, large parts of the UK are being left behind in the electric revolution, uh, despite government targets encouraging drivers to go green. BBC analysis has found uh, in Northern Ireland, according to, the, according to the BBC survey, we only have around 300 car charging spots out of 7,000 uh, throughout the uh, the UK. So um, have you switched to electric? How have you found it? Do you have trouble finding a, a charging spot for your car? Uh, do let us know this morning at 1771 on the old uh, the old text messaging. Um, we, we have an electric car owner on the line this morning, Philip Wilson, and also motoring journalist uh, Quentin Wilson. Uh, Philip, let me start with you. I, I mean, I, I want to ask some basic questions about this, OK? So the yep. first question is that many people out there will be thinking... When Philip gets into his car, how far can he drive before he needs to recharge it? Well, that's a good question. Um, at the moment, coming into summer, um, you can go about 80 miles. We only have a very small car with a small capacity. Uh, but in the winter, because it's colder, uh, about 65 miles would be, the, would be the maximum. So it's a bit of a strange one. You have to do a little bit of planning just to work out uh, where you are. But uh, don't forget, in Northern Ireland, we don't often go far. Do you know what I mean? A, a 20 or 30 mile journey is quite a significant journey in a lot of cases. Yeah, but if, but I mean, if you say you've decided to, to go to, I don't know, Dublin for the day or, or Port Rush for the day, you, uh, you're always <laughs> trying to base your journeys around where you're going to be able to charge your car. We have a, we have a, a I as a, a kind of dad have a hybrid car and my wife has an electric car. So we're kind of the best of both worlds. If I was going to drive to Dublin, I'd almost certainly take the, the, the hybrid car. Yes, but you have that uh, choice. The, yes, yes. But, I mean, that was a choice that we that we chose, you know, to, to, to have one uh, hybrid but if, car. But if you only had an electric car, I mean, that that wouldn't be <laughs> overly convenient. <laughs> it, it, I'm, I'm guessing it would be a struggle. I've never been to, 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 to Dublin. Um, I'm guessing it would be a struggle. But I read online that people often stop in Apple Green in different places and, and it works fine for them. How long does it take then to recharge the car? Well, our, our car normally will recharge in about, I don't know, 45-50 minutes uh, at a decent charger if you're able to get a decent charger. And if you're charging overnight at the house, the, the house charger wouldn't be the capacity of some of those other ones. So about maybe three hours. So you come in from uh, whatever you're doing, plug it in mm. overnight, and that will probably do you about two days. So we'll charge it two or three times a week in the house. I mean, you, you know what my next point's going to be? It's a long time at the apple green. Uh, well, it isn't, it isn't, in that, um, you know, you're probably, start, if you're going on a longer journey, you're probably stopping off anyway. People who do these things get very used to it, so, so you bring a book with you. If it's a summer's day, you, you bring a seat with you. Um, you, you eat your lunch, you know, you, you kind of, you, like everything in life, you kind of adjust your life around it. it, it I mean, it just seems a very hard job to convince someone that if they're going to drive any further than... Uh, 65 miles in the winter, as you've said, and 80 miles in the summer. You know, for every 80 miles you drive, you're adding 45 minutes on, on, on the, the time of your journey. The um, the opposite is, is true in that if you use an electric car regularly, you have a charge in the house. Uh, it's like having a petrol pump attached to your front door. So you, oh. you, 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 do you know what I mean? You charge it up two or three yeah. times a week. And but what, what if you don't have a garage or a, what if you don't have a garage or a driveway? How does that work? We we have a driveway, but uh, we don't, we don't have a, a a garage. I guess if you don't have a garage or a driveway, you would um, um, you know you would. I I know a number of people who who don't have uh, house chargers or, or or whatever. A number a number of um, employers would have installed. Uh, uh, you know, so you drive to work, leave your car as you work nine to five and, and drive away mm. with you know, the employer having... having uh, Can I ask for, a quick question uh, of Philip as well? I mean, obviously yeah, it was a decision certainly. you've yep. taken within your family that you want to embrace new technology, but how much difference was the cost of your car? You said it's a small car. If, if you compared it with other small cars in that range, what was the premium you had to pay to make this it choice? It would have been similar, maybe 20 to 30% more, but it would have been similar where the... the the massive cost benefit comes, and, and it was a cost decision rather than um, the, the environment or anything like that. You know, uh, my wife previously would have been spending maybe 160, 180 pounds on fuel, and now we pay for a, for a battery. It's about 90 pounds, so, so there's a there's a there's a fixed cost saving each and every month of about um, you know 70, 80 pounds. Plus, there's no car tax, and and the insurance is very reasonable. So it's it's. I would think it's probably a saving of maybe £1,500 per annum. 
Qu- Quentin, I haven't forgotten about you. Don't worry, but I want to ask Philip one final thing about this in, in terms of what we found in the survey. Philip, how do you think we are um, providing it when it comes to chargers? How well do you think we're doing? <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it the case that a lot of these charging points, when, when you go to them sometimes, are broken, uh, as someone has suggested? Uh, and, is it also, and is it also the case that many of these chargers actually don't apply to all cars? It's a bit like car, uh, phone yeah. chargers. That's a that's the kind of thing you'd have UK wide or Europe wide or whatever. So that's that's kind of not relevant to to the conversation. But certainly in Northern Ireland, I mean, there was a fantastic charge on the Dublin Road, and somebody somebody knocked it down, and it was just plastered over. You know, it was just taken away. It was a really good charge in a really accessible uh, place. You would think that you would almost have a charger at every street corner, and certainly in Belfast, there are only two or three chargers. Um, a lot of them haven't worked for for months, if not years. And because of, I was listening to the conversation earlier, because of our government and funding and all these things, it's so far down the agenda that, that it's almost off the uh, off the list. Um, when you say 300 charges across North Ireland, um, you're talking about a charging station, which may have two, but both of them may be broken or that charger may not exist anymore. So if you're actually to, you know, to go out and, and do a physical test, I would think... You know, I think 300 is, is, is a huge exaggeration. I think it might be more like 50 to 100 working um, acceptable uh, chargers. And you're quite right, not every car fits every uh, every charger. So, so, Qu- so, Quentin, when you listen to Philip and, and the picture that he's painting, it, it seems as if we're miles away from being able to be ready for, you know, an electric revolution. Well, yeah, the electric revolution, the mass electrification is quite a way away, despite what what the government would tell us. Um, And this is constrained by the range of of modern electric cars and the charging infrastructure and the inconvenience. I, like Philip, drive a a small uh, electric car every day, and, and my range is similar, about 70 miles. And if I need to charge up and have that 40-minute charge window, which is the most convenient one, I need to find a 50-kilowatt charger, that said, the, the, the rapid charger, um, and they're few and far between. So it is limiting. Um, and the problem is, you know, who's going to pay for the infrastructure, the charging infrastructure? The government says we didn't pay to build petrol stations. Why should we build um, a charging infrastructure? And then the private sector still can't see that there's enough profit in this for the, for the billions you're going to need in investment. So we are a way away from, from, from having more electric cars on the road. It just, it just seems was old. It just seems uh, from a February. practical point of view, Quentin, it's a hard sell. It is a very hard sell. Um, and until you get cars that will do 350 miles to a single, maybe 15-minute charge, you're not going to get people, as you said in your introduction, to give up their one car for an electric car. And most electric car owners I know have two cars, so they have the choice. <sighs> Quentin, uh, Philip, appreciate you both chatting to us today. I think this will be interesting. A lot of people might have a strong view on this. Uh, 81771, um, your experience, is it similar to that of Philip? If you do drive an electric vehicle, whenever you do go looking for those chargers, um, he's suggesting a lot of them are, are, are very much unloved, I think mm. would be the uh, the best way to describe it. Um, do send us your experiences today, 81771 on the text or at BBC GMU if you are tweeting. Interesting one. Okay, now, uh, we were talking about electric cars and uh, I knew you would uh, come to our aid this morning. We were asking about your experiences. Uh, lots of you have been in touch already. Uh, re-electric cars uh, go to a typical showroom and there just aren't the models to choose from they don't go far enough e.g. Dublin Airport says one uh, listener Uh, Peter tweets I've been driving a Nissan Leaf for five years and find it brilliant I have about 160 miles capacity that's uh, unlike uh, who we heard from earlier the the gentleman we were speaking to his his car he had 65 in the cold Mm. weather and 80 in the warm weather another Uh, one about the point you were making about the Standard of the charging points there. Yes, and, and there's another one, another problem that we didn't even uh, get to, Karen. Two charging points in car park in Cookstown, uh, but spaces are always used for all-day parking by inconsiderate drivers who don't have electric cars. They park in the space that means you can't you even can't get charge to them. the charger. Yes. Uh, the Northern Ireland Public Charger Network is in dire need of investment, says Mark McCall from the Northern Ireland Electric Vehicle Owners. Uh, however, new 200-mile and 300-mile range EVs and overnight home charging means most people may soon rarely need one. Electric vehicles provide a fantastic driving and ownership experience. Our last 12 months fuel 
uh, in adverted commas, uh, costs just two hundred and thirty-five pounds for twelve months. Mm, to so, the battery, um, I presume. Yes, yeah. yeah. So keep them coming. Eight one seven seven one at BBC GMU. If you are an owner of an electric vehicle, uh, the pros and cons, or if you uh, are considering one, or if you decide it's not for you, let us know the reasons why.